Have you ever been flying your quadcopter in angle mode, auto level mode, and the accelerometer is just a little bit out of whack? And that means that the quadcopter keeps pulling to one side and you keep having to put in stick input to correct for that. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just use your trim switches to fix that? You normally can't because as soon as you switch from angle mode back to acro mode, I mean, if you only ever fly in angle mode, then yeah, just use your trim switches. But as soon as you switch from angle mode back to acro mode, now your channels aren't centered and your quad doesn't fly right. So wouldn't it be great if we could configure our controller so that our trim switches only applied when we were in angle mode, and then as soon as we switched to acro mode, suddenly the channels were all centered and the trims were ignored. That's what we're going to do today. It's time for an advanced Edge TX tutorial. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. I'm going to do something a little bit different with this video. I'm going to show you this tutorial twice because I usually demonstrate this kind of thing on my Radio Master TX16S with a big glorious color screen. And then I say, all Open TX and Edge TX radios have basically the same menu structure. It's just a little bit different on the smaller screen. So just you figure it out. But this time I'm going to show it to you on both radios. It's not going to take too long, but there's chapter markers in the timeline down below if you feel like you want to skip ahead. And I'm going to start by pressing the model key and then paging to the inputs screen. There's actually a couple of different ways you could do this. Like some people are thinking, why don't you use flight modes? Eh, I think it makes more sense to me to do it with inputs. But uh, if you've got a different way you would do it, tell me down in the comments how you would do it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy each of these four inputs. So the way that OpenTX and EdgeTX sort of handle the control flow is that you've got a physical control like the stick. The stick outputs a, a position, if you will. Uh, and then that goes into the inputs, which uh, may apply a custom curve, may apply a weight. And then from there, it goes to the mixer, which controls what channel it goes on and how much uh, goes out that channel. And then from there, it goes to the outputs, which can adjust the endpoints and center of the channel. And this all is way more complicated than it needs to be. It goes back to the days when we didn't have flight controllers and all we had was servos. So all of the control of the relationship between how much I move the stick and how much the servo moves had to be handled in the radio. Nevertheless, it gives us some opportunity to tweak stuff like this. So here in the inputs, I'm going to uh, click the jog wheel while highlighting AL, aileron. Uh, that's the roll input. I'm going to choose copy. And then I'm going to click again. And I'm going to choose paste after. And now I will have two aileron inputs. Fine. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the second one and I'm going to edit it. And if we scroll down here, one of the options for an input is whether trims are applied. So if I set trims to off, then when this input is active, I'm just going to hit return and back out here. When the second input line is active, then trims will not be applied to this input. And when this first one is on, then trims will be applied. So one of these, they're exactly the same, just one has trims and one doesn't. So then how do we control which one is active and which one isn't? And we're going to do that by using the angle mode switch. So for me on my radio, angle mode is switch SD in the center position. That's just how I've set my radios up. However you set yours up, whatever switch position you use for angle mode, that's what you're going to use for this tutorial. I'm going to go into the trims off the second one. I'm going to click it and edit it. And if we go down here to the switch parameter, the switch parameter allows you to define whether this line is on or off based on a switch position. So instead of scrolling through this list and trying to find the switch, I can simply move the switch to the position I want. And you'll see that it will immediately highlight switch SD in the middle position as the option. If I then back out, we can see that this line will become active when switch SD is in the middle position, except as I move the switch, you'll see it's not becoming active. And I think the reason for that is that you can only have one input line active at a time. So it's just the first one that hits is the one that will become active. So here's how we're going to address that. We're going to go up to the top line, click the jog wheel and edit. And we're going to make that one be switch. And we're going to put SD in the middle position again. And then what we want to do is we want to say that this first line is active whenever switch SD is not in the middle position. And the second line is active whenever switch SD is in the middle position. 
See, when we're in angle mode versus when we're not in angle mode. And the way I can accomplish that is simply by long pressing on the jog wheel. And you'll see a little exclamation point will appear here. Exclamation point SD in middle position. And that exclamation point is programmer speak for not. So what we're saying here is, if I just back out here, this first line will become active when switch SD is not in the middle position. The second line will become active when switch SD is in the middle position. And now what we should see is that we have trims when we're in angle mode and no trims when we're not. Let's check that out. So I want you to look down here at channel number one in my channel readout. And you can see that is my roll channel. And if I put some trim in, you can see that that will begin to go maximum trim out to the maximum trim. So here we've got maximum right trim of 24%. But if I switch to angle mode, I've done it backwards. I've done it backwards. <laughs> I have trims when I'm in acro mode, but not angle mode. Dang it. Dang it, Bardwell. Let's just real quick fix that. Go back to the inputs. SD middle position should not have trims. No, I want trims. SD middle position has trims. SD not middle position, that's not angle mode, should not have trims. Oops. Okay. Now then. <laughs> when I'm in acro mode, no trims. Angle mode, trims. Come back. Bada bing, bada boom. And of course, I would repeat that for each of the other four into the three. You wouldn't do it for throttle. I mean, what even is throttle trim? I don't know. You decide. But I would repeat that for the pitch roll and yaw axis. And then I can trim to my heart's content while I'm flying. And I got to say, this is more useful than I think maybe some people think. It's not just that your accelerometer can get out of whack and need to be trimmed. And some people say, well, if your accelerometer gets whacked, you're crashing anyway. I don't mean what happens when you smack a wall and the quad literally is just like, Wah! you're going to crash there. The right thing to do is to disarm, land, and then re when you rearm, it usually sorts itself out. I'm talking about like, I was in a whoop race once and I found that I kind of didn't like having to constantly hold forward on the stick as much as I was. I, I, I found it a little bit awkward to hold forward on the stick and then also steer. And I, I just put in some forward pitch trim and trimmed forward. And then the quad would just take off and fly forward all by itself. And I would, could focus on steering. So there's lots of reasons why you might decide to do this. Next, I want to use the Radio Master Zorro to show you how this exact same process differs when you're working with one of these smaller black and white screen radios. The Radio Master Zorro, the Jumper T Lite, the FreeSky QX7, all of them are going to have this exact same interface. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to take a second to remind you that I have a Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as two dollars a month or more if you feel like I've earned it the amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you and you can stop anytime you want patrons get access to my discord server which is full of friendly helpful people uh, just like me who will help you with your problems or just chat with you about FPV and then patrons also get access to podcast downloads of my live streams if you prefer to listen to those on a podcast instead of watch them live but mostly what patrons get is the good feeling that they're supporting the work that I do here if you enjoy tutorials tutorials like this and you want me to keep making them, the single best way you can make sure that keeps happening is by joining my Patreon at any dollar level. If today's the day that I've earned your support, then there are links in the video description to my Patreon. And if I haven't earned it yet, maybe you just got here and you're like, who is this guy anyway? Hey, keep watching the content. I'll keep making the content. Maybe that day will come. So I'm going to press the model key and it'll bring up model select. And then I'm going to page forward till I get to the inputs screen. All very familiar so far. I'm going to highlight that first one and I'm going to long press and copy. And then I'm going to long press again. And what about paste? What can I paste it? Shut up. Okay. Well, already a small difference. I forgot in a while since I worked with one of these radios. I'm glad I did this. The way that these black and white screen radios work is if you just, after copying, roll down, it will automatically just sort of, it's showing the extra line that I'm going to be adding where I'm going to add it. So if I just click down one time, it'll add a second copy of that line right there. Then I am going to long click and edit. And here we can go in and we can look for the switch parameter, which is right here. And this one is going to be SC, I guess, is my angle mode switch. So we'll put SC middle there. 
And if we continue down, here's the trim option. We'll set trim to off. And then if I hit return one time, I can go to this first one and edit. I'll long click and edit. And I'll go down. And for this one, it's going to be switch. God dang it. SC middle. And then if I long click, I can invert. There we go. Oh, goodness me. Well, my batteries are dying, but I think I just about finished the setup. I'm glad I did that because it's been a while since I used a black and white screen radio and I kind of forgot a couple things. So I'm glad you were along with me for that ride. Now, if you love this style of advanced OpenTX tutorial, you're going to love another video I did where I programmed the radio to detect if you turn, you know, it doesn't it stink when you just turn right, turn right, turn right, turn right, and you never turn left or vice versa. I programmed a radio to detect when you turned right or left too many times in a row and then play an audio file. You can make whatever audio file you want uh, and warn you, hey, turn the other direction. And if that sounds really interesting to you, card right here. I'll see you there.